I mean, that, that ties into the last point that I would like to talk to you about. And it's maybe not so much just within Italy, but just um, a question of leftist politics in general uh, for the coming years and the coming decades uh, during this crisis. Um, like on the one hand, uh, the crisis inevitably, inevitably brings the state back in. So at least on the level of the state, um, decades of neoliberal cuts and less state spending on welfare and other public uh, provisions um, are now to a certain extent forcibly uh, reversed. Um, you know, to what extent will happen, we'll have to see. And it's part of uh, uh, partly the result of, of how successfully we struggle for them. Um, but at least to some extent, uh, the state is forced to take a more active role in the economy again. Uh, and that's something that the left, of course, at least on the level of, of state and electoral politics, has been asking for for a long time um, and now perhaps can push to make more permanent again. Um, but on the other hand, um, crisis powers also give states uh, a lot of options for repression and breaking through barriers of privacy and repression that before yeah. would not have been accepted. No, um, like The use of Corona apps is one example. Um, uh, and these also can very easily become permanent, you know, um, all kinds of uh, uh, principles can can become permanently uh, uh, embattled in our systems. And I think we, we don't have to go as far as Agamben, uh, a leftist political philosopher in Italy, who has written a lot about states of exception, but uh, also during this crisis wrote several articles, which, in my opinion, were just crazy ramblings that basically came down to uh, coming out completely against any emergency measures and uh, talking about the need to accept death as part of life. And, uh, you know, I want to leave that to the side because I think that's crazy stuff that I don't even want to get involved in. Um, it, it's on par with sort of the far right protests in the US, but also here in the Netherlands that are just going out and calling for a complete reopening uh, of, the, of, the, of the economy. Um, but still, there are serious concerns. And uh, how do we as a left balance, balance these demands for state intervention, uh, protection of people's and workers' lives, and at the same time guard against this abuse of power? Uh, because we are not, uh, as you said also in Italy, we are not in a very strong state. It's not like we have a lot of influence over what's happening um, uh, in the state at the moment as a left. So how, how do you think about these, uh, these things? So uh, I agree with you on Agamben, of course, and uh, I think that uh, uh, the virus exists. The people uh, fear for their selves, uh, for the people they love, to uh, they don't want them to get ill and to die. So they accept in uh, a most uh, in a more. Uh, uh, Easy way the, the, the government measures of above all the, the, the police on the streets, the fact that uh, they, con they can control you in every moment, and so on. Of course, state repressions try to use this uh, um, situation to uh, make the control on people stronger. Uh, this is natural, it's, it's, it's in their nature, okay, it's in the cops' nature to do this. What, uh, what we, ha we can do in this uh, moment is uh, trying to make the people and uh, to push uh, in, um, in some directions these, uh, these situations of control. I mean, it's true that there is uh, a danger that, uh, that that if the people they don't follow the rules, the contagion will spread. But we uh, physically, empirically uh, discovered that uh, where there were the enterprises opened without safety measures, the contagion spread uh, spread off in a very very fast way. So we say yes to more control. What we have to say as left is that it's not controlling if the people, they run alone around their home, uh, that you will keep uh, the people safe, but it's, con 
is uh, controlling the if the enterprises which have to be closed are really closed and they weren't of course it's controlling if it's that inside the enterprise the, there is safety there are safety measures for workers is pushing in this direction uh the willing of control which all the people wants uh, in order that the, the, the virus uh, not spread not spread off so uh what we can do in this moment is uh, this kind of uh, of stuff of course uh, the government is not doing this or is trying to criminalize normal people what normal people do every day just to go around uh, uh, the, 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 there, there has been a, a huge polemic, huge, uh, I don't know, polemic? Polemic, yeah. Polemic about uh, the, the, the people working on the street, okay? Yeah. The, the, cre the, the, the laws uh, which enforced the lockdown in Italy uh, allowed the people to go on the street once a day, twice a day, just for essential Necessities, necessities like going uh, uh, to essential work or uh, to go out for to, to put the garbage inside a container or to go to out for courses. Yeah. What? Uh, but you can also you could also go for a walk around your house. This was the the law. The government, when the, the contagion spread in Lombardia in a very fast way, what the government uh, was saying to just to, to, to just uh, put the responsibility uh, far away from this decision to keep the industries, the economic activities open, is that uh, the, the, the government said, okay, the, all the it's uh, the people who works around their homes fault, okay. I, you didn't understand the yellow what I said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the government is as it was doing with the migrants before. Okay, you no, know, the, the migrants are the people who steal our job, they rape our women, they kill, uh, they put, they bring crime in our countries and so on. Now all the social problems are shifted to the people who work around their home and not to the enterprises, not to the, of course, to the, to the other stuff. So what we have to do is clarify uh, to our people that it's not our fault if, uh, if we respect, of course, the safety measures that uh, the, the spread of the virus, but it's fault of some uh, choices that have been made, uh, putting profit, profits before people. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. I think changing the terms in which we have these debates is is crucial. I mean, I, I also cringe when I walk on the street and I see some people really not um, listening to the measures that we have to take. And, uh, you know, it has some type of impact, but it, it pales in comparison to the, the much larger scale decisions of allowing people to go to work without protection um, just to keep businesses running. Um, and I think one of the, the biggest scandals um, in all of this for Europe uh, as a whole and the United States uh, has been the complete lack of preparations by states. We knew that the virus was coming. We were warned. Uh, but there was no large scale preparation whatsoever uh, in terms of measures, in terms of stockpiling tests, in terms of stockpiling piling protective measures, in terms of starting to produce these things. Uh, and I cannot help but think that this is connected to decades of neoliberal cuts and, and the gutting of uh, state bureaucracies. And it's really seriously impeded their ability to govern um, in any uh, sensible way. Uh, and now they're, they're trying to grab on and figure out uh, how to contain this crisis. But uh, if you look at the numbers for North America and Europe, they, they completely uh, win and to, to talk about to talk in american terms um over asia uh, and other continents uh, which have somewhat successfully contained the virus and uh our cases are through the roof and states yeah. are not able to seriously protect people and at this point in time don't even seem to try to do that anymore it's just about letting the virus spread slowly i think 
rather yeah. than still trying to contain it and then um, opening up slowly and measuring, uh, um, sorry, tracing who was uh, cont- who was um, uh, contaminated with the virus and who they were in touch with. Uh, no, it's just letting it spread slowly and um, live with the results. But the results are uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of deaths. Yeah, what, what you, you're right that, that, that this crisis uh, made us uh, discover uh, how our communities, uh, our uh, our welfare social state was has been destroyed, literally destroyed by uh, decades of neoliberalism, of privatization of cuts and so on. And if you don't have the possibility to build, uh, test, uh, mask for uh, the doctors, uh, how can you face a virus like this? How can you face a normal flu? I, I, we, we talk about the emergency of the coronavirus, but every year in Italy, in the hospital, we have an emergency of, uh, for the normal, I don't know how to say, the, the flu. The, yeah, the flu, the influenza. The flu. It's it's very it's very the, the the health system was already in emergency situations before the virus. When the virus came, uh, one of the categories which were of course more exposed were the sanitary workers, the health workers, doctors, nurses, and so on. All these people. Uh, in the first moments, they didn't receive any adapted uh, mask for the situation. They, because in Italy we don't uh, we don't have uh, the, the, the sanitary system doesn't uh, buy abroad this kind of uh, stuff. Uh, but this cannot uh, work, of course. If you want to make the, the sanitary system work, of course, you have to have a public production of this uh, dispositive, uh, or at least a national production of, of, the, of this dispositive, in order to have the possibility to uh, to have the to make the health system work. Yeah. We have we had a lot of doctors and nurses which died for this for this reason which uh, were uh, infected by the virus and just died. And this is not, uh, not fair. And, and uh, I think that after the big fear, someone will remember it. The, the left, of course, should repeat it uh, uh, without uh, um, stopping the, uh, what happened. But I think, I hope that the doctors and the nurses, the, the, the health workers of Bergamo, of Lombardia, will remember, will keep in mind what happened, and after the, the big fear, will get on strike and ask for invest, public investments and public uh, production uh, for uh, the health system, because this is the only way to rebuild some social system, rebuild some our communities, and uh, rebuild the possibility for our. Uh, uh, people to to live uh, uh, to, to have a good life to to, to, live, to live well well and not to die for a normal flu and that's what's happening in Italy now yeah I completely agree and um, I, I think there are still serious dangers though because you know uh, politicians even even uh, amidst this crisis are still ta- like in the Netherlands are talking about coming budget cuts in the healthcare sector. I mean, it's unbelievable, it's scandalous, but uh, it's happening and it should be unacceptable. But I, I still fear that um, the left might be, as it has been in the past decade, on some issues outflanked by the right in terms of um, standing up from some type of uh, public measures um, and some type of public policy. And that will be you know, the biggest uh, danger if... if some mainstream leftist parties continue to be captured by a neoliberal dogma, we're going to come out of this crisis even worse and, and the far right is going to um, win even more. Uh, so I think definitely struggles in the healthcare sector are going to be uh, one of the crucial uh, locations of battle uh, for the left in years to come.